Did you know behind the silence of deserts, a vast industry emerged? This is Iran, where limitations transformed into remarkable technological opportunities and resilience. Iran's missile program is a story of survival, innovation, and national determination. This narrative unveils the industry of indigenously built missile propulsion engines in Iran. The Iran-Iraq war was the very first spark of this program. When the skies of cities burned with missiles, Iran stood defenseless. Sanctions blocked any purchase of weapons, leaving no option but building. From that point, the first seeds of Iran's missile industry were planted. At first, imported Scud missiles were considered Iran's only dependable solution. But foreign dependence proved a bitter and unsustainable lesson for Iranians. Young engineers boldly decided that the technology must be created domestically. The difficult but inspiring journey truly began from that very point. After the war, Iran's defense institutions accelerated the path of self-sufficiency. Shahid Hemat and Shahid Bagheri Industries became the nucleus of progress. One focused on liquid propellants, the other on solid fuel propulsion. This division of labor built the foundation of a complex industry. Meanwhile, the Revolutionary Guard organized the Aerospace Force for deployment and operations. Martyr Hassan Tehrani Moghaddam became the central pillar of missile development. Known as the father of Iran's missile program, he pioneered breakthroughs. Among them, efforts to design powerful and advanced solid fuel propulsion engines. Liquid propellant was the first technology accessible for Iran's missile designs. These engines were controllable, but required long fueling before actual launches. The lengthy hours of preparation left missiles highly vulnerable to enemies. Yet, they formed the backbone of Iran's Shahab and Ghajar programs. Solid fuel was the next leap for Iran's missile industry. These motors required no fueling and were always launch ready in storage. Their long-term stability made them ideal for quick tactical responses. Fateh 110 and Zulfikar became defining examples of this crucial leap. Solid motors, however, faced a serious challenge of control and steering. Once ignited, shutting them down was nearly impossible without advanced systems. Iran solved this by adopting flexible, movable nozzle, vector-controlled technology. The Salman motor became a masterpiece with lightweight composite casing technology. Hybrid propulsion also entered Iranian laboratories seeking to merge advantages. In such systems, fuel remains solid while oxidizer is liquid. The Zuljana space launcher combined two solid stages with a liquid. This technology simultaneously opened pathways for Iran's space program ambitions. Sanctions perhaps became the most decisive driver of Iranian self-reliance. Blocked access to technology pushed Iran toward reverse engineering strategies. Domestic part production and innovative design replaced foreign equipment acquisitions. Iran proved sanctions could never restrain the technological willpower of nations. In the 1990s, Shahab 1 and Shahab 2 entered military service. These missiles were based on scuds but redesigned with Iranian modifications. The Shahab 3 marked a milestone with ranges exceeding 1,200 kilometers. For the first time, Iran could strike well beyond its borders. The Fateh 110 began Iran's era of precise solid fuel tactical missiles. This missile, highly accurate, could launch within only a few minutes. Later generations evolved into anti-ship and precision strike derivatives with accuracy. Fateh eventually inspired the much larger family of Zulfikar missiles. Zulfikar, with 700 kilometer range, became the next Fateh generation. 
it carried a separating warhead to improve strike accuracy drastically. Its longer reach and less than 10 meter error were unmatched. Variants like Basier and Kbarshikan grew from this foundational technology. Sejil, Iran's first two-stage solid fuel missile, emerged as a breakthrough. With nearly 2,000 kilometer range, its motors were fully indigenous technology. This missile placed Iran into the rare club of solid range. Sejil 2 featured reduced preparation time and greater operational reliability altogether. The Khorramshahr family carried Iran's heaviest warheads with liquid engines. These missiles could deliver warheads of unprecedented weight capacities. The Arvind engine, integrated within the tank, revolutionized compact design. Khorram Shar 4 combined pinpoint accuracy with enormous destructive potential capacities. Gadar 110 missiles employed a hybrid design of liquid and solid. This innovation reduced launch preparation while significantly extending ranges. Compared with Shahab 3, Gadar was lighter, faster, and far more accurate. It clearly demonstrated Iran's maturity in hybrid propulsion innovations. United Nations sanctions heavily targeted Hemet and Bagheri industrial groups. Yet Iran continued along the path of complete indigenous propulsion. Parallel projects by the Revolutionary Guard and Ministry ensured resilience. This dual structure rendered the missile program practically unstoppable. Iran repeatedly proved its capability to bypass technological restrictions successfully. Composite materials, advanced fuels, and domestic navigation systems were developed. Universities and students contributed deeply to missile science and engineering. The result was a self-reliant, dynamic industry defying external pressure. Comparisons with North Korea have always been part of analyses. Both nations began their journey with the Soviet Scud missiles but Iran limited its missile ranges to 2,000 kilometers, whereas North Korea has entered intercontinental missile development programs. India, meanwhile, advanced its Agni missiles to 5,000 kilometer capabilities. Iran has not yet stepped into true intercontinental missile domains. Yet in tactical precision, missiles, Iran shows remarkable superiority. India focuses primarily on deterrent strategies against China regionally. Pakistan built its missile program with Chinese and Korean assistance. Shaheen and Gauri missiles are direct products of foreign transfers. The Shaheen 3 reaches 2,500 kilometers targeting the Indian subcontinent precisely. But Iran surpasses Pakistan in accuracy and actual combat experience. Russia stands among the world's supreme missile powers unrivaled today. Yars and Sarmat ICBMs highlight Russia's unmatched military engineering achievements. Iran's industry remains far from this absolute technological echelon entirely. Yet in West Asia, Iran ranks second only after Israel. The defining trait of Iran's missile industry is adaptability under pressure. Every new sanction transformed into a driver of domestic innovation. Iran now indigenously produces the full chain of missile engines. From fuels to guidance, the cycle is domestically manufactured completely. Recent breakthroughs like the Salman motor and Rod 500 exemplify achievements. Lightweight composites, thrust vectoring, and high accuracy are now guaranteed features. This new generation elevates Iranian deterrence capabilities to higher levels. It signals the entrance into an entirely more advanced stage. This story showed how limitations transformed into technological opportunities instead. Iran, through determination and innovation, indigenized its missile propulsion programs. Today, this industry stands as a pillar of national deterrence, and the world is compelled to take this power seriously.